Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Career Australia Season 2 where we talk to industry experts and professionals from various fields because here we are on a mission to understand and decode the current happenings in the market with regards to opportunities and employment for job seekers and students alike. On our show today is Mr. Matthews, thank you so much for joining us. He has flew all the way from Darwin to Melbourne for this particular episode. So thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Matthews is a registered Mara strategist. I am super excited to be asking all the questions that are super specific to regional migration. Thanks a lot again for your time, thank you. sir. So Mr. Matthew talking about regional migration. Far from being isolated, most regional areas have very well established and welcoming communities of migrants. In what terms of employment opportunities do you think that regional Australia is better for job seekers in comparison to other major cities like Melbourne or Sydney? All right, so it's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know that uh, Australia is moving to regional. All the strategy they are making is they wanted the regional Australia to be um, a bit more into the radar uh, so they wanted to move a lot of businesses into regional and they wanted to develop regional because you know the cities is overwhelmed now so every, every strategy and the planning which australian government is looking forward to make more attractive for the regional australia therefore there are a lot of industries a lot of businesses are attracted to regional australia mm -hmm. and in some in in fact some of the state governments offering incentives for that so you can see there are a lot of businesses are uh, coming there. Therefore, there are a lot of opportunities also there. Uh, okay. In terms of region, again, regions are very, very different when you compare with North and South yeah. or even the, uh, in the Western side of the Australia. So some regions, we got a lot of mining happenings uh, yeah. in North and uh, in, in the West part. But in the southern sites, uh, you've got a lot of agricultural sites, sort totally. of businesses happening. So it depends on uh, what sort of, uh, uh, you know, area we are looking for. It is very, very wide. But one thing I'm sure, the, the opportunities of employment is really, really high. Interesting. Yeah. Now, um, considering that we were talking about the employment, mm -hmm. um, after graduating from a regional area university, yeah. an international student is eligible for full-time work rights for yeah. an additional year on a yeah. post-study work visa. Yeah. Now, how is this post-study work visa distinct mm -hmm. or different to the temporary residence visa or air quoting it, the so-called TR? Yeah, this is basically the same visa. It's uh, if Again, as I said, Australia have a focus on the regional side of Australia, the regional Australia. So the Department of Immigration, the minister decided to offer mm. uh, an extra year and extra two years for students who are completing their graduation from a regional university. Interesting. So in fact, a uh, lot of universities like semi-regional area like Perth, Gold Coast and all, you get an additional one year, yeah. whereas you studied in more regional like for example, Darwin, where I came from, yeah. if you study there, you will get an extra two years on top of okay. the 485. So the post-study visa will be two plus two in that sort wow. of universities or any institution you completed there. Then other regional universities like, you know, Perth, Gold Coast, as I mentioned, or in Geelong here in, 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 in Victoria, you all get additional one year. Nice. So ideally it's two plus two for very regional yeah. and two plus one for semi-regional. Definitely our audience can have a look at where they can have two yeah. plus two and where they can have two Obviously. plus one. It's available. Um, yeah, considering yeah. that we have so many regional yeah, areas, yeah. right? It's, all you need to do is you need to just Google it, uh, the postcode, regional postcodes of Australia. Mm -hmm. There where they defined it, where it is. There we go, friends. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> All right. right. So I have come across so many fellow students and friends of mine who migrate from another country yeah. just with the aim to get a permanent residence in yeah. a country like Australia, mm -hmm. while starting with a university in a major city like yeah. Melbourne or Sydney. Yeah. And after that course of study to earn those extra five points or yeah. whatever points that, that is, I'm yeah. not too sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Got you. They opt for regional migration. Yeah. Now, could you help me and all my friends okay. with the pointing system that mm -hmm. shall give us clarity on this whole regional migration procedure, mm -hmm. um, you know, to all make right. yeah, things yeah. simpler? So 
first of all, I just wanted to clear. A lot of students come here for study purpose oh. and they go back to their own country. Yeah. But from, especially from India and South Asian countries, uh, we all know like the people's aim probably will settle down in Australia after their studies. Uh, look, there are a couple of things we need to uh, really keen. So in regional Australia, you may not have all these courses available, like Correct. it's available in, uh, in, for example, Melbourne or Sydney. So it depends on the course, what you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, then you may not have uh, many choices other than studying in uh, Melbourne or Sydney or, or some other uh, metropolitan areas of, us, uh, of Australia. Mm. But again, there are a lot of university campuses in regional Australia where they have very, very good courses. Interesting. Yeah. And students who wanted to come and study here, complete the study, they may get higher, higher, you know, very good jobs in, for example, like a recent student who came from um, Dubai, is a parent from a Kerala family. They just wanted to study in a prestigious university and they wanted to go back to Dubai to look after their business. Okay. So for them, migration is not a pathway, then we will suggest an appropriate universities. Whereas someone who's really, really wanted to settle back in Australia, mm in a regional site or wherever it is a PR is the pathway, mm -hmm. then the point system kick in. Definitely. As we know, uh, most of this, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, the migration program is point based, mm -hmm. where when you consider the point in terms of the education, yeah. when you study in a regional area of two years, you get an additional five points. Okay. So whereas if you study in Melbourne CBD or Sydney, you won't get that points. Okay. So the people can only claim that point if they studied in a regional universities and lived in a regional area classified in that postcode hmm. then you get additional five points that is the benefit okay. of uh, benefit of that yeah all right so my research was not as bad yeah. it is additional yeah. five points it's an additional well five points. Yeah. <laughs> sigh of relief there yeah. um so this is very interesting to understand that, you know, there's a major yeah. city like Melbourne and mm -hmm. Sydney where you do not get these points. That's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are so many students who opt to yeah. choose these institutions, yeah. um, considering that, you know, it's a major city or yeah. it's a well-known city with so many visa options out there. There yeah. are times when I tend to get very confused in yeah. spite of understanding the basics just the basics guys yeah. um, of these visa yeah. rules having lived here for a fair bit. Yeah. Um, I can now imagine how difficult it can get uh, to understand for someone who's just willing to migrate to Australia, who's actually looking into these universities mm -hmm. um, to take up courses. Yeah. Um, so can you just help us to get some clarity on this matter yeah. of... Um, yeah. Sure. Like. Uh, before I start, you know, touching that point, I wanted to highlight a bit more around uh, the need of our uh, insight into the university sectors in Australia, especially the space or the places in Australia. So before I came to Australia, I only know Melbourne or Sydney only because of the cricket matches happening there. Uh, that was my insight about Australia. So still a lot of students have the same insight. They only know like a couple of cities in Australia they all fall probably under that, uh, you know, the, the, the metropolitan uh, Australia. So I will ask or urge every student who wanted to come to Australia to do your own research, to understand Australia a bit more rather than you just listen to any a, a, a Mara agent like me or an education agent like someone in, in your own country. You need to do your own research, it's important. And you, if you are looking for a migration pathway, better to get some good consultation before you, you know, just uh, come here. So coming back to the second point, uh, yeah. the, the migration, uh, people can migrate directly from overseas uh, to Australia. All Australia opened that for, for a long, long years. And uh, the skill migration is well known in the world. And a lot of the countries, including the UK, is following us. Yeah. So there are not many type of visa subclasses. The one is called 189, that is a direct PR, the most attractive PR. Mm. But again, as we mentioning around Australia, I have a bit more focus on regional. The focus of 189, the direct PR is coming less. They are not allocating many seats for that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it is really, really hard to get the 189. Totally. It is a point-based system. Totally. And now I'm thinking you look around 95 points to 100 points to touch that 189. 
uh, without an Australian study and regional study and all of the additional additional point requirement you don't go to meet. So that means it is very unlikely for an overseas person get that visa directly to Australia because of the point requirement. Totally. The second one is called 190. It is a state sponsored PR. It is a direct PR. Mm -hmm. There is only one obligation of two years to that state. You need to stay there. That's it. Okay. So it is similar to that. And every state have their own occupational list. Okay. And some state have a pathway for their own students. For example, like Western Australia, Northern Territory, they all have a straight away they will get 190 visa mm. if they meet you know, certain that occupation list, they create that. The last one called 491, that is a regional visa, skill visa, where they have a lot of allocation and the f and there will be more seats will be allocated to 491 rather than 190 and 189. So therefore, you know, Australia's focus is regional. They want students to come to regional. Therefore, more seats allocation happen in the regional uh, PR. It is not a PR 491. It is a PR pathway. It is called a semi-PR, we could say. So they will get a five years of visa. And within the five years, you meet certain criteria like you, you know, you employed in a full-time occupation for three years and you get a salary of 53K. Like that is the basic tax income. Wow. So that therefore you can meet the 191 that is the PR is coming in in, in this November, December. Beautiful. I'm just very curious to know when you actually mentioned about that, you know, it is yeah. not a direct PR, yeah. but it is a pathway. It's yeah. a semi PR it a, uh, yeah. procedure. Um, is it like a very strong pathway, if I may ask? Look, it is, it is not like it's an easy one. Like it's okay. all about Australia looking for that people who nominated on 491 wanted to work full time because the regional need uh, more workers, as, as we mentioned before. So yeah. 53K is not a bad amount in mm -hmm. the regional area mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. people can uh, easily get that. Super. And you don't need to be, you know, uh, you know, like collect that money with a single occupation. You can always do the second occupation. Okay. The interesting part, if you are married, any of your applicant can be the primary applicant for the PR for 191. So right. if your wife or if you're with a husband, anyone who achieved that 53K, and then they can be the primary applicant for 191. Where you, when you apply for the PR from 491, you don't need skill assessment, you don't need all of those wow. criteria. So it's all about the three years of financial year and three years of calendar year and you the 53K of the taxable income. Nice. Considering mm. that you're a strategist, I think you exactly yeah. have the strategy to have a PR. Yeah, of course. Beautiful, of course, yeah. beautiful. Um, also, um, Mr. Matthews, please help me mm -hmm. with something wherein I know so many of my friends yeah. um, who were sure of what they really wanted to study in Australia. Yeah. Now take my example. Mm -hmm. I knew what I really wanted to do yeah. and that's what I did and here I am. Mm -hmm. But I also knew a set of my friends and I still understand um, that they do not have this clarity of what they really want to do after yeah. migrating to another country, after wanting to, you know, pursue their dream of yeah. um, moving to another foreign country mm -hmm. and um, they absolutely have no clue of what their interests are, what their background looks like. Yeah. And they completely divert to another background altogether from their grade 12 or after their yeah. bachelor's, right? So I just want to understand mm -hmm. what are the sectors that one can look into or what are the courses that one can take up if they have absolutely no clue, if they are blank of what I really yeah. want to study of what they yeah. really want to study okay. after migrating to yeah. Australia. Historically from India, like uh, we have a high number of students coming here for studies, like studying, pursuing their masters yeah. because they normally complete their bachelor's in, in India or, you know, some other foreign universities. So uh, there was not a big issue that time because they already completed their bachelor's. Therefore, they are pursuing masters in similar subject. Totally. So now the trend has really, really changed. Everybody wants to get out as soon as they complete year 12 or year 10. So therefore, this confusion happened. Um, you know, if you're looking for a PR perspective, so Australia need a lot of health professionals mm. uh, that can be including the nursing, you know, if, if you're from South India, you know, like we contributing the majority of the nurses in Australia, like if you go to any hospital, you can know, for example, like, you know, the lot of institute like IHNA is owned by us. Uh, Malayali community and uh, you know they brought a lot of nurses into this uh, this, uh, this world 
uh, to Australia. So similar to that, uh, you know, we have allied health, yeah, like physiotherapy, audiology, speech pathology, social work, psychology, occupational therapy. There are a lot of allied health is in high demand in Australia, whereas a lot of our students can study bachelors in that. And uh, traditionally, we also like to uh, do uh, computer engineering or a masters or bachelors in computer sciences. Hmm. That's also got a high scope and Australia pumping a lot of money into cybersecurity in the last wow. two years. So the, the area is on focus there. And engineering, if you look into the north and south, uh, north and west part of Australia, mining is one of the main income for us for a long, long term. And we are hoping to have that for a, at least a couple of centuries. So that uh, engineers, you know, studying in engineering is always a great idea in Australia. Uh, Interesting. So that's all, you know, like you could easily pick courses for many people, but a lot of other small, small courses which you can get PR also. No, I would like to understand. I mean, it was such an interesting answer. Yeah. Wherein there's, there's like a platter, platter yes. of opportunities yeah. for people yes. who are migrating to yes. regional Australia. You mentioned uh, nursing courses. Yeah. Um, so, so many people from Kerala who would yeah. who'd like to, you know, become yeah. nurses and want to serve people. Yeah. I think it's such a it beautiful, um, beautiful, uh, you know, what do you call it? It's, it's service to humanity, it is service, isn't it? Yes, yes. And then we have engineers wherein we have so many yeah. students back in India who are unemployed, yeah. uh, becoming engineers, right? Mm -hmm. So, th there are opportunities for engineers as well. And there is yeah. mining and... Um, Really, really so yes, many opportunities yes. out there. Yes. So interesting to know that. Yeah. Um, well, it has been a very interesting discussion yes. uh, all this while. Mm -hmm. So um, I would just like to understand uh, what is it that, you know, uh, people wanting to migrate to Australia or mm -hmm. regional Australia yeah. uh, to be specific. Mm -hmm. um, to look forward to. I mean, yeah. what is that that, you know, um, I would like to tell my friends that, hey, listen, if you're migrating to regional Australia, yeah. this is what you have to look forward to. What are those, you know, highlighted points? Yeah, look, um, Australia is always hard for migration. Yeah. When you compare with Canada, UK and all, it's easy to get there. Yeah. But Australia is very, very specific around what uh, skills they wanted. Yeah. Uh, it's called a skill list. You know, every year we publish a skill list. It's called MLTS soil, you know, like uh, the and STS soil. There are two types of skill list and ROL as a regional occupation list. That is a new one, which when they started focus on the regional side, it is so it is easy for anyone to open that list and have a look. It's available anywhere in Google. You can download it from immigration website. So those occupations are in demand for next couple of years. So there is a reason that list is there. They're, that's based on the industry need. So that is a very uh, industry specific list. So you could easily look into that and double check whether that your nominated occupation or your aim to become that profession have a fruitful career in Australia. Beautiful. And you can always look into different regions of Australia, what in demand in that regional. So. Uh, when someone looking for a regional uh, uh, migration, you need to look into your total point system. Yeah. Uh, when I say about 189 and, four, uh, 189 and 190, it was mainly into point system. Yeah. Whereas in regional, the state and the regional bodies have a discretion to select based on experience. In the last one year, what I'm seeing is more than points, they look into people's experiences. Hmm. So they can convert that easily into their uh, the industry. For example, like a regional Australia in Western Australia, uh, Western Australia may offer 491 for a very experienced engineer, even though their point is just 65, because they know that this engineer already have an experience. It can easily transfer into that industry. Beautiful. So even in Northern Territory, they don't care about points. As nice. long as you've made the basic points, they look into your skills. Nice. That's it. So, so when it comes to regional, it's more than points. Your experience matters. Yeah. Yeah. No, out of curiosity again. Yeah. Um, so I just want to understand now when you said experience, yeah. does experience of like a fair bit of two years or three years mm -hmm. in India yeah. really count in Australia? 
or like regional Australia to yeah, be it's, specific? It, it depends on uh, depends on the occupation. For example, okay. if it is a nurse and she got a two years of experience, definitely that can count because we are in a dire need of nurses. Nice. Uh, if it is a, again in social work, uh, social work you might need three years to even get some some of these assessments. But similar to that sort of uh, occupations where we are in a dire need, mm. two to three years not a bad. When you have a three years of overseas experience, you claim at five points. I normally wow. take clients at least with three years of experience, no less than with that. Three to five is my peak. So from there, you could have an easy you know, pathway, for, pathway for that. Yeah. You know, I don't want to give any you know, unnecessary or a, un, un, it's not a, you know, you don't, you should not give a, you know, an expectation to them like, you know, with these yeah. small sort of things you can make. Right? False hopes. False hopes, yes, yeah, sort of false hopes. So you need to have certain uh, level of points in the migration system and you have a specific experience that can bring Sweet. 491. Yeah. Sweet. Um, if I'm not wrong, uh, you started off as a clinical social worker, if I'm yeah. not wrong. Yeah. Um, so did that count as a very strong pathway for you to gain yeah. your permanent uh, residence? Uh, 10, almost 11 years I'm in Australia. Yeah. I got a direct PR Sweet. from Kerala. From Kerala. Uh, so a lot of social workers migrated to Australia. Yeah. Uh, you know, without any studies, you completed there. You can get a direct PR here. So, you know, I've been working with, still I do one clinical day. Uh, and then, then I chose this career. Beautiful. A bit more flexible, uh, you know, like there are a lot of social workers coming through us because I'm a social worker that are quite easy for them to understand those yeah. things. So I'm allied health also. So it is easy for them to, uh, you know, for us to explain to them the pathways, live yeah. examples. So yeah, it's a lot of people are still coming as a direct yeah. PR. I'm sure you must have been really good yeah. at what you did as a social worker. Yeah. But thanks, thanks for actually, you know, yeah. diverting your pathway and helping yes, all of yes. us here. Yeah. And thank you so much. Yeah. Um, well, uh, thanks again for the time. And thank That's you fine. so much for flying for this particular episode uh, to our studio for yeah. M4TV. While we wish each of you who want to migrate to Australia all the very, very best, it's time for me to say bye. I will catch up with another episode with another guest and lots and lots of information. This is Sapna signing off. Adios, amigos. <laughs>